We're going to actually install Dark Radiant now, so we can do some real editing. After all, that's the whole reason we're here. Just going to start with a Google search, Dark Radiant. That brings us to the SourceForge page. You'll find various files here. First of all, it's version 1.0.2 from October 26th. The first file is the Visual C++ 2008 redistributed from Microsoft. It's a file that sets up some background files on your computer that allows the Dark Radiant program to run. It's possible that you already have the necessary files on your computer and you don't need to install this. And then here's the actual Dark Radiant files. For 32-bit, an installer version, and just a zip version, and 64-bit. So there's five things here, and that can get possibly a little confusing, make you a little unsure what you should do. You probably know whether you have 64-bit Windows, but even some of you aren't sure about that. But even if you know you're on 32-bit, you might not know whether to do the zip or the installer. I would just suggest that you do the installer. It makes the program on the program menus, it makes it so you can uninstall it through the Windows uninstall. It seems nice and neat to me. However, if you know that you would prefer the zip, then go ahead. But if you're not sure, then do the installer. That's just the more normal way to do it. But we're not going to actually download from here. We're going to go to Shadow Dark. Shadow Dark Keep. You can see a dark mod update here, and it has the download section that I've reworked. It's all focused on the dark mod now. You actually could have come here from the beginning for everything. You can download the dark mod here as a single download zip. You can download the Doom patch, and here's Dark Radiant. It shows the version number. This is 1.0.2. What we just saw was the latest version. Here's the version numbers and the dates for the files. Sometimes I can get a little out of date, so that's why it's good to go to the source usually for your downloads. But I thought that this would be convenient to have everything in one nice location and to simplify it. There's just one Dark Radiant download. Now inside this zip includes quite a few files that it mentions here. So we'll just download that. Save. On my computer it saves right to the desktop automatically. You'll probably have to choose a save location or it might go to somewhere else such as my documents in which case you'll need to go find the file. Just move that over a little bit. I like to right click and hold, drag over, let go, WinRAR, extract here. Okay, let me just pull these up here so you can see everything. First of all, Here's the 64-bit version. We're not going to use that, so I'll trash that. This is the Visual C++ redistributable file. This is the simple instructions I've written. Here's Dark Radiant. In the instructions, I just say, you must install the Visual C++. Then I say, most of you will use the 32-bit version, and just double-click an installer and follow the instructions. Install in a folder not within your Doom 3 or Dark Mod folder. So that's it. Pretty basic. Now, just for fun, we're going to not install the Visual C++ and see if it works. It's possible that my computer didn't need this, but if there's a problem, we can come back and install it. But usually that's the first thing you would do, but we're going to skip that. So we're just going to double click on the Dark Radiant installer. I prefer to put it in games, and on my computer that's on the F drive. And again, I prefer games. Now notice on the previous one, well, here, that's not Doom 3 or Dark Mod. It's a separate, its own directory. And desktop icon. Install. Now it's a pretty small program itself, so it should install relatively quickly. All the textures and models and everything, that's all in the Dark Mod folders. So it doesn't have to install that just the editing program itself. Finish. And there we see the Dark Radiant shortcut just popped up. Now before we actually start Dark Radiant to test it, I want to show you one other thing. If we go to the start menu of my computer, on your C drive in documents and settings in Windows XP, 
under administrator or your name, whatever it is on your computer, under application data. In here, as soon as we run Dark Radiant for the first time, it will create a Dark Radiant folder right here alphabetically. Now, when you go to uninstall Dark Radiant so that you can install a newer version, perhaps, you might sometimes want to come in here and delete the Dark Radiant folder. The reason being, it stores some of the menu locations and items that are on the Dark Radiant interface. And if those have actually changed in the newer version, you're going to be stuck with the old interface. That's usually not the case. Usually you can get away with keeping the folder because the interface hasn't changed. And the other good thing about keeping the folder is it retains all your preferences and your own keyboard shortcuts that you've set and such things. But you run the risk of having an old interface. So it's up to you. If you hear about a feature that other people have that you don't have, maybe it's because you're running an old version of Dark Radiant, even though you seem to have installed a newer version because you had the old interface saved in the files in this folder. We'll show you that folder later on. I'm just going to shrink that. Well, let's go ahead and try it out and see if it loads up. We'll see. It's getting started up. Showing some startup messages down here. There's the map file starting up. Well, it looks like it's working. It started out maximized going off the screen here. Let me put it back. Now it's way too small. So let me drag it out. And it has dragged that really wide. So let me pull that back. Okay, this is the standard view. This is the 3D view, the mapping area, and where you can see your different textures and console messages and lots of other things. The only thing we need to check right now is the game settings. Down here in file, select game. All right, it looks like it's all set up properly already. This needs to be the directory where you installed Doom 3. For us, it was F Games Doom 3. I don't know why it has that final slash, but there it is. The mod needs to be the folder named Dark Mod. The mod base is something that you might adjust later on as an advanced editor, but right now we can just leave it alone. So it's okay. It looks like we didn't need to install that Visual C++ thing, or maybe something will pop up later saying we need to have it. But it doesn't hurt to install it. I would recommend just installing that to get it out of the way. It's in the background. It's not going to affect your computer in any other way. But that's it for now. We'll just go ahead and close this. And we can delete the install file that set up instructions. And we'll hold on to the C++ file for now. We've got the Dark Radiant shortcut down here. We'll uh, delete that zip, move that there, and have our two shortcuts right up here. And the last thing I wanted to show you was the Dark Radiant folder on the C drive again. So we'll just go back to the folder that we had and refresh it. That got created when we ran Dark Radiant for the first time. And in it, there's a few files that maintain our own settings and preferences and keyboard shortcuts and the user interface. This is something that you might want to clear by just simply deleting that folder here. Like, delete. I'll go ahead and do it now. And that's harmless. It's just when you run Dark Radiant again, it'll create a new one with the new default settings. So that's it. Next thing we'll be doing is actually getting into Dark Radiant, learning the basic controls, and make a couple rooms.